How's it going, Forex traders? I bring you good tidings from this side of profitable trades. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been making a lot of money with this strategy that I want to share with you guys. My name is Dapo Willis, if you're just joining me for the first time. And today, I want to reveal a very sought-after strategy that I've been talking about for a while. It's called the Falling Knife Strategy. Very simple but effective strategy. You see, lately, I've been trying to eradicate all the complicated strategies that actually just don't work you know what i'm talking about fair value gap do this do that it starts getting too complicated and the truth is when we were introduced to forex it was never this complicated so i want to take you guys back to the basics and how you can actually use what you already know to make money from the market my responsibility is to show you how to use what you already know to extract money from the market like i said to you guys the folly knife strategy has gone on to make me a it's like guys i've made so much money trading the falling life strategy and it's absolutely brilliant all you need to do is sit right there don't go anywhere get yourself some popcorn some coke whatever thing it is you like get yourself a paper and a pen this video is going to be about 35 minutes long sit down there and learn let's leave the fancy cards and the Lamborghinis in one corner for now let's learn how to do things properly like I said to you guys the falling knife strategy which I'm about to share with you guys simple yet very very effective once again my name is Dapo Willis if you haven't subscribed to the channel ensure to do so right now because you're going to be doing yourself a great injustice if you haven't I'm sharing simple strategies I'm sharing behind the scenes I'm doing analysis there's even a segment of my YouTube channel where I come on here to pretty much not signals but I give my analysis for the week and the month ahead and if you watch these videos you can make a lot of money so what are you waiting for smash the subscribe button and let's jump into my stream let me show you guys this falling knife. Let me show you what you already know and how to use what you already know to profit from the market. All right, guys, let's jump into my chat and let's go. How's it going, beautiful and amazing Forex traders? Hope you guys are good. Welcome inside of my screen. As you guys know, recently I've been on the campaign, uh, just like I said in the intro of the video, recently I've been on a campaign to actually using my platform to educate you guys even further um the idea here is for me to use very simple yet effective forex trading concepts um to illustrate to you guys that the simple things actually this do still work you don't need to be stressing yourself too much about all the stuff that is going on out there right now the problem is just because traders were not able to find a way to be successful with what they learned on things like baby pips over the years they dumped it and they started to look for things that seemed a bit more complicated, hoping to find some form of uh, some form of a holy grail. But today, like I said at the beginning of the video, I want to use my platform to show you guys that the problem is it's not with the strategy, it's not with the it's not with the concept. The problem is what they taught us in the textbook is not exactly how the market moves in real life. The market is very dynamic. So what I'm going to be showing you guys here is the falling knife strategy. I'm going to be demonstrating to you guys how it works. And I'm going to most importantly be telling you what pairs you can use to trade it with. That's the issue. Which concepts work with which market? And how do you place the stop losses? How do you get in? What do you look out for? And how often does this form? Another thing is, what is the probability of me actually making money from it? The truth is, if you understood all these things about a particular concept or strategy, you will feel a lot more confident trading it. And for me, it's taking me over 13 years of experience to be able to say, ah, okay, this is what works for this and this is what works for that. So, no need to speak too much. I'm going to jump right into my charts as you can already see. Um, but before I start to demonstrate or illustrate anything, I want you to go ahead and smash the subscribe button right there because you don't want to miss out on the realistic way, the most realistic way, and I repeat, the most realistic way to trade Forex. You can only get it here on Learn Forex with Dapo Willis or as, as I like to call it, Dapsy Radio. Okay, so let's jump in, guys. So back to what I was saying, I want to illustrate and demonstrate to you guys the falling knife strategy okay so i'm going to be explaining the concept to you guys before i start to draw so the idea is for um 
I'm just going to use a couple of my uh, tools here to illustrate a couple of things. So the idea, guys, is for us to be able to, okay, for example, we have an impulse leg, not, not an impulse leg. So we have an impulse pattern going to the upside. So we have high, low, high, low, high, low, blah, 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 an upward trend. Now, the idea is to be able to catch a trend reversal move to the downside okay or vice versa i'm going to explain that to you guys so let's say you see and i'm going to quickly delete this you see the market doing something like this okay so we got upward <clears throat> downward and guys you don't want to go anywhere you want to listen to what i'm saying this is if you can get this right this works 95 percent of the time okay pull that this okay and then we have the final push to the upside okay now let's say you are probably able to catch all this move to the upside and um for some strange reason you see something like this okay bam what does this signify this signifies okay this signifies right here a change in trend because for this trend to be able to continue to the upside we must continue to make what higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows higher highs a higher low should have formed here and this bad boy should have gone all the way up here now for the fact that we came down here we have officially violated market structure simple as abc right now the question is okay now that we've been able to violate market structure how do we trade this market moving forward now the idea of the falling knife strategy and why it is so accurate is because what happened on the left hand side will guide us all the way to the downside yes we can use the peaks and the troughs of the left hand side to be able to guide price action all the way back to the downside now the idea of forex trading as retail traders is to be able to look at historical price action and use that as a guide to what exactly is going to happen in the future right makes sense so this is exactly what the falling life strategy looks like and it's very simple and straightforward i'll be sharing with you guys what pair uh, this works with uh, very well and you can obviously use it in your training as well i just use it for my like i said at the intro of the video i just use it recently for gbp jpy and oof, i was able to net about probably about 55 to sixty thousand dollars on that trade alone now what happened on gbp jpy which obviously i'm going to be showing you guys an example pretty much shortly is we did have a massive drop off, a huge sell off. Okay, think of this sell sold off to somewhere about here. Okay, now that we've sold off to somewhere around here, now in the textbook, and this is how most traders will be thinking to trade it. Ideally, we should be coming and pulling back into this level about here. So this should be our pullback for further downside. But over the years, after further testing, I started to realize that the market doesn't really care much about here. <laughs> For some strange reason, it just doesn't care much about here. The market will rather pull back into the previous high on the left-hand side. This is what I was saying. On the left-hand side, which is here, and then start to make its way all the way downwards okay so ideally what you want to be doing is this now how do you enter the market blase blase all of that usually what you see is you see something like uh, a con uh, not a consolidation like a a stack of stand candles here let's say we came here and then we you could see some candles form here for me and for me and then it drops some form of a supply zone somewhere around here so ideally this is exactly where you want to be looking at and this usually always falls in line in confluence with the 50 fibonacci level okay this right here forms the 32 okay let me explain this to you guys again properly if we were to pull into here okay and you start looking for a sell position about here this pullback is not enough this causes premature entry a lot of traders are like ah i look to the left you get it and then you start selling and what you start to see is something like this some push down and then you eventually push all the way for the bigger pullback this occurred here because of this and this also occurred here because this is usually the 32.8 retracement level the 32 does not work 
Baby Pips told tells us it does. Real life says it doesn't. The market will respect it, but it does not push the market in the way we need it to push to ultimately give us that massive amount of pips. So you can get deceived by this, but in hindsight, what actually works is this one. So you really want to be looking out for potential 50 fib pullbacks be waiting for the bigger pullback to align with this bad boy somewhere around here now because of the fact that we've done something like this this will now also give us an opportunity to draw what they call a counter trend line like so so ideally i will be looking for a bounce off of this region okay the market will probably come and test here for a bit are you guys listening and then we'll probably have a breakout retest continuation of this trend line before we eventually now start to push all the way to the downside okay simple and straightforward rule number one we need a clear break of structure rule number two do not be looking to trade the support on the left hand side you want to allow the market run into resistance that formed on the left hand side simple as abc if you ask me now let's go over to the next trade and see what exactly a would look like now the question is how where do we take our profit out from okay first of all let's talk about entries right i explained to you guys sorry guys i need to adjust this so we can have some space okay so i told you guys first of all where would i be looking to get into this trade so the very first thing is i wouldn't even be looking to sell here i would be waiting for the market to come push down here break counter trend line and break this bad boy here for me this is not my resistance for entry to sell for me this is my confirmation after the bounce off of here has pushed us down below here guys this is the primary cause of premature entries in forex yes because the level that you're supposed to use to confirm your entry you're using it as the main region for supply or you're using it as the main region for a bounce off no you're supposed to allow the market creep further into the resistance on the left hand side and then let it push out of here we still don't sell we need to wait for the market to come back because the market can come here literally come bounce off of here and rally all the way to the upside so you can see how we're using double confirmation. We need to come in here, have a push out, and we need to have a clear break out of here. I don't care what your pip count is from here all the way up here. I don't care. The idea is for you to have, guys, I keep telling people I'd rather have a short trade than a trade that has a lot of risk to reward, but the probabilities are slim okay i don't really like trades that the probabilities are slim now the question is you're saying to yourself ah, but that this is just a 1.21 to 1 1.5 the truth is when this usually forms the market actually doesn't just stop at the 100 percent retracement what actually happens is because it's a fibonacci pullback what tends to happen is we eventually roll over to the one to the uh not point I, I call it the 1.27 extension right about here so ideally you're looking at about a 2.5 to 1 or a 3 to 1 risk to reward now this is just hypothetically um speaking obviously because this is um what's it called this is obviously some illustrations and some diagrams so it is very important that we understand these things so that we are not jumping into premature trades especially for a trend reversal trade now guys i'm going to repeat this one more time okay i'm going to quickly delete this so guys one one first thing you need to understand is this bad boy is not going to hold your pullback it's the one on the inside that's going to hold your pullback that probably has a cluster of candles here. You draw your swing from naturally from swing A to swing B, and this is swing C that will eventually push it lower. Ideally, now another thing is ensure to take out now guys these are the rules of engagement please listen to this ensure to take out at least 20 percent of your trade about here at this green zone is where you want to be taking out 20 or 50 percent is up to you so if i have two lots open i will be closing one lot 
Yes. So I like to take out 50% of my trade here. No matter how little it is, I will close out 50% and then move my, my trade is here. My stop loss is what here, right? I'll move my stop losses to break even because the 100% retracement is very extremely powerful. This bad boy here can spin this market to the upside. And my GBP JPY trade, that's exactly what happened. As if I knew. Guys, another thing you want to look out for is this 100% retracement. Hmm. If you start to see bullish engulfing candles off of here, get ready to even close all your trades. Ideally, for me to even be comfortable with it, I need to see a clear break. Now, let's take another example, right? So, let's say we eventually drop off from here and we do, we have a nice sell all the way down here, right? What are we going to be looking for? I will not be looking for a pullback into this level about here, no. So most traders are like, mm, we've pulled here, I will come here and I'll sell here. Do you know that the market can even bounce off of here? You're like, ah, confirmation, you start to sell. And the next thing you see is that we actually pull back into somewhere like here. Now look left, I don't really even care much about this level. What I'm looking at for is the left hand side, which is here. Coincidentally, it lines up. But even if this was even steeper somewhere around here, okay i will still be looking out for this level somewhere around here let me delete more of this green zone so that you guys don't get confused it is the levels the resistance on the left hand side that will determine the turning point reversals on the right hand side this is all i'm trying to preach to you guys it is so simple it is so straightforward like this is the falling knife strategy now why do i call it the falling knife strategy why is it falling knife because guys, trust me, once you are able to get this market in the right position in terms of a sell-off trade, the market drops like a falling knife. It cuts through like woof, especially on gold. I'll show you a gold example, gold examples, and recently my GBP, GBP JPY trade. And the reason why I call it the falling knife as well is I prefer to trade selling markets. I like to trade markets that sell off because I feel like there's a lot more liquidity when the market is dropping. I don't know, like I'm just used to selling and uh, clicking, uh, I'm just used to having more uh, make, making more money from selling markets. I guess my eyes are just trained more to look out for selling markets and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I feel comfortable trading selling markets because I feel like I just know that over time I've just been more profitable to trading selling markets. So this could also be applied for a bullish setup but I have realized that I have made I, I have had more success in bearish setups. So I usually like for a, 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 a push up to the upside and then let us break structure and then start to make our way all the way down to the downside. And then I start to navigate. Guys, so this is a very clear cut scenario. Um, and then another thing I like to tell you guys is this is the first point of the trend line. This is the second point of the trend line. Now, usually what happens is you can now officially start to draw your trend line for the third touch this usually comes in confluence with the Fibonacci. This comes in confluence with this resistance on the left. And this comes in confluence with the trend line. Now, this, this region is now officially known as the Willis Zone. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, I teach this on the Forex Mastery Program in depth, in details. If you haven't grabbed the program, the link is in the description as always, guys. You see how clean and concise this explanation is. Imagine if you have the Forex Mastery Program and you have me as your tutor constantly teaching you how, which, how, what strategy and what concept to use for what exact market. You see, Forex information is free everywhere. But what is not free everywhere is what works for what and what doesn't. Guys, the truth is, why do traders take forever to become profitable? It's because they, they're not certain as to what works and what doesn't work. That's why I'm here. That's why the Forex Mastery Program is here. 13 years worth of experience, I'm like, okay, aha. You see how I just told you this for a bullish setup? Eh, eh, eh. You probably be trying this on bullish and never tried it on this bearish and you're like, it doesn't work. But I told you from experience, bearish is the way to go. That's why you should grab the program. The link is in the description as always. Get it and become a Forex Mastery student. But enough about that. Let's go back to some actual demonstration here. Now, 
what usually happens is by by the time we form our second consolidation right and another thing you need to pay attention to the second consolidation will be similar to the first consolidation so what do i mean so if we had push up pull back push up pull back chances are that this boy would imitate kind of but it will not exactly look the same this is where a lot of traders get get a bit twisted it won't exactly look the same this day you see how this one is clean and nice this third one might not exactly be as clean as not and nice but you will notice that the amount of pip counts might be similar the size of it okay the size of the consolidation will be very similar and then once we pull back into here this is almost a no-brainer okay this is what almost a no-brainer the third touch of the trend line always does the trick that's where the magic lies and ladies and gentlemen if you can sometimes and this is what i do and this is the trick behind it sometimes i don't even trade the first pullback i allow the first pullback drop to tell me your depths you know let's go <laughs> let's go like i'm confirming to you that yes indeed this uptrend is done and i'm ready to sail downwards so this first one will give me uh, uh, an idea of what the second one will most likely do the size of the consolidation and you know stuff like that and the thing about the third one is the third one is where the magic really happens because the third one is where majority of the sell-off happens the third touch of the trend line always does the trick forex mastery student we know this we know exactly how this works the third touch of the trend line is where the magic truly happens let me centralize this a bit more for you guys the third touch of the trend line which is this one is exactly where the market truly really happens so ladies and gentlemen the truth is this forms it happens maybe every other month um for me all i need to do is come on here and look for setups like this and i'm pretty much good to go i know that for a fact this will give me a decent risk to reward of at least five to one now the question is where do i enter this so ideally i would oops sorry guys this keeps moving let me just close this out nicely so ideally where are the entries i would like for a push out from this region it can still be inside the fibonacci zone but i will look for a bearish engulfing candle you see baby pips only teaches us how to use each of these individual tools trend line here support here fibonacci here um um what's it called uh candlestick this one that one but experience teaches us how to bring all these things together so i will still be looking for a bearish engulfing candlestick formation to form here close down here and then i'll be jumping on the sell trade with my stop losses above here don't forget guys now let's start to talk about take profit zones okay my very first take profit zone will be this green bar here don't forget i said to you guys don't don't kid yourself don't kid yourself this bad boy here this support just because we didn't exactly respect it here does not mean that on his way back down it will it will definitely come and respect it here you want to what have at least maybe 10 percent of your position taken out here then move stop losses to break even so t1 will be here and then t2 will be here you don't need to take out much five percent take ten percent of your trade so for example if i have two lots open i'll close 0 0.2 here i'll close another 0 0.2 here move my stop losses past break even now the question is why are we taking out uh, take profit there why are we taking something small guys rule number one as a forex trader never make profit and give it back to the market if you've seen yourself in profit take something and keep for yourself so that the trade is not a waste you can always use that small profit you've taken to t use as risk for another trade you want to place. What do I mean? Let's say I close out 0.2 here and close out another 0.2. I close out 0.4. Let's say my the, the one I've been able to buy maybe is $1,500, right? And then the market somehow comes here, right? Listen, guys. And then we push back up here, stopping my trade out for break even. Think about it, guys. I've at least been able to extract something okay i've been able to extract a thousand five hundred dollars now i can keep that one thousand five hundred dollars that the market has given me and use it towards a new trade this way i have transferred what i made from here whatever the market has given to me i have then invested it as risk for my next trade keeping my capital intact see these 
are the methodologies and the psychologies behind trader risk and trader emotions that a lot of traders fail to apply when they're trading and this is really what separates the successful 1% of traders from the remaining 99% of traders that actually fail. See, these are the little tricks. Don't forget, take something small. Take something small. No matter how little, bang, never go into a profitable trade and live in losses. It is a no-no, it is a taboo in the game. Most traders are always like, the risk to reward is too small. I'm, uh, dude, grow up. The market is not your father. You have no entitlements to it. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it most likely looks like. The third touch of the trend line is usually what actually just blows up the, the market all the way to the downside and pre you're pretty much good to go. So, first level target here, second level target here. Usually, I won't even take my profit out at this point. What I'll start to do at this point is I'll start to trail my stops. For those of you guys who do not know what trading stops are, I'll explain to you guys very simple and straightforward. So at this point, once the market gets here, I won't close out my trade. I would, let me delete all this one. I would then, maybe you have my stop losses that was probably at break even, that's about here. I'll just be moving it so that your, your trading platform does this for you automatically. As the market is dropping, dropping, the stop loss will just be coming down, coming down, coming down. So, the idea of a trading stop is to guide my trade throughout the entire uh, trend so that maybe I'll probably put a gap of maybe 70 pips to allow potential pullbacks and then we drop pullbacks and then we drop so that this one will just be here moving, 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 pending when we eventually want to start reversing and then heading back to the upside and then voila, I'm totally out of the trade. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you guys, Keep your eyes out for setups like this. They work perfectly well, especially for on the falling on 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 uh, situations whereby we are uh, heading to the downside. And I want to also tell you guys something very interesting. If for any reason we come and put in a double bottom here, just put this here, and then the market is now looking something like this. Okay, we start doing something like this. You're even in luck. That's why I say don't die, don't kill yourself and be like, oh, I only took something little. The market is going to die. The market is starting to reverse to the upside. What am I going to do? I didn't make enough. Take those 0.2 lot profit, 0.2 lot profit that you had because if this market breaks this trend line, we're heading all the way back to the upside. You have all these pips to back to the upside and this cycle continues again because you have all these levels to guide you as you start to head all the way to the upside simple we'll break up here we'll pull back here we'll push to the upside block so don't stress yourself guys there's always going to be trading opportunities here and there i love to use this once again why guys especially the falling line forget about the blowout to the upside i like the falling line because I have trading opportunity one, trading opportunity two. This third one usually always drops all the way to the downside. 90% of the time, it will go into free fall. Yes, but the remaining 5% of the time that it doesn't go into free fall, don't be afraid because why? Maybe it just wants to blow to the upside. So either way the market wants to go, that Polis is going to be here to catch it with all the amazing Forex Mastery students. Once again, guys, I love you guys very much and thank you for watching the demonstration side of this video. I've gone over how it works, okay? The entries, the exits, the pairs to use for this. Now, I'm going to take you over to some real life examples so that you guys see how this works out in real life. Like I keep telling to you guys, what works in the textbook is a bit different from what's out, what works out in real life. So don't go anywhere, sit right there and while I take you to my next stream, guys. Guys, let's go. <clears throat> All right, my people, like I always say to you guys, it's one thing to read about something, it's one thing for, for, for it to be theoretically correct in terms of what the book says. Now it's another thing for you to um, actually practice it in real life. And that's the same thing that goes for trading as well. It's easy for you to demonstrate, you know, it's easy for you to back test, but when it comes to actual trading, totally different ball game. And that's the, mo the, the always the issue most traders have. Like, you know, I see them and they're just like, oh yeah, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this this works and that doesn't work. Guys, when it comes to real trading conditions, the market is is crazy. So like I promised you guys, I was going to show you guys some real life examples. Um, so what I have in front of me here is actually gold. I, I like to use the falling knife strategy for gold. Gold is one of my favorite um, 
pairs when it comes to trading the falling knife strategy falling knife strategy can be used for any pair to be honest provided you're able to understand um the the, the dynamics behind everything that's going on so i'll just quickly explain to you what's happening in terms of gold i'll just delete all my uh drawing tools as you guys can see so what we have in front of us here is very clear and simple you can see the uprise of gold to the upside however we've got into a point whereby um Gold has pretty much put in a double top, like so, okay? Um, so the very first thing I'm gonna be watching out for is for a potential double top and then a breakdown, just to be sure that this bad boy is actually done and dusted, okay? So I'm just gonna adjust this pretty nicely and I'm just going to, um, yeah, let's see. Let's see what going on and how this plays out. Um, <clears throat> You can see I'm able to break to the upside and then I start to see a push out. Now, we've tested one, two, three, four. Uh, this is one, this is two, three, four, five. And then we start to drop down again. And if I zoom in pretty nicely, you can see that the last push is lower than this one. So all of this is just a sign that this market was about to start rolling over, right? So what we have is we can clearly see that this market wants to start dropping all the way to the downside. But before we start to drop all the way to the downside, let me just quickly zoom in pretty nicely. Um, before we start to drop all the way to the downside, I would like to also look left for some potential areas whereby I feel like the market some potential resistance levels on the left hand side and i don't know if i'm making any sense um because at the end of the day that's the idea of what exactly we're doing here but when i look at for potential area resistance on the left hand side i also like to look out for uh, areas where i can have some form of a confluence okay so like this one is a pretty decent zone because obviously as you guys can see and guys you have to understand i would I, my preference will always be the most immediate resistance levels to the left hand side uh, some other ones are decent over to here but i would like to look out for the most immediate ones okay to the left hand side and these ones are pretty immediate now could i put it here now the reason i'm not putting it here is that there's no there's no confluence here this one i like this one because this is confluence with this one two and then we have the base of this touching this as well so I'm just going to pretty much watch this to see how it unfolds and we'll just watch it pretty nicely. And as you can see, the pullback starts to happen. You can see this happens and then the market drops all the way down. So for me, this is my very first sign like, aha, okay, okay, what's happening here? What is actually happening here is we've, the market has finally committed. This is a double top. We have broken the neckline, so to speak, of this double top. Well, it's a bit tricky in this one, but you can see that this market was also in a range here. And this range acted as the right double top to this, obviously, left double top. And you can see, bam, guys, this is a no-brainer. You can tell that this uptrend that was happening is done, right? So what I'm doing is I'm looking now for a potential pullback into this green bar. I'll be watching pretty nicely and I'll be getting ready okay and also remember if i zoom in pretty nicely we have had a retracement okay i didn't train this retracement because usually remember when i said to you in the in the demonstrative video usually when the first pullback is forming you don't really know that's just the truth you don't really know so ideally i'd like to wait for the first pullback to happen i would then like to trade the second and then trade the third pull back okay so yeah and then obviously we've pushed in here okay so the, the the trick here is this ideally i'll be looking for a consolidation to the tune of the amount of candles as the first one it might be more it might be less but i know the the i know the i have a rough estimate of the amount of candles that might potentially form on, on this next retracement because the first retracement looked like this as you can see i won't be looking for a big retracement like this no because I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. I'm trading smaller retracements and the first retracement has formed. I'll be looking to another smaller, slightly small retracement that looks like this one. I won't be, I won't be trading here and be expecting a big retracement like this. No, this is now the flow. This is now the structure I'll be trading. This is the structure, structure high, structure low, you know, and stuff like that. So this is exactly what I'll be looking out for. Yeah. And as you can see, we've pretty much come in here and then we've tested it okay now be watching this now at this point i will not be comfortable to what say oh ah okay the, you know we're pretty much testing here you can see it's looking pretty nicely i will then be looking out for bringing out what they call my counter trend line as you can see pretty nicely um counter trend line is one one this is one of my um favorite 
entry strategies that I use. Um, it saved me a lot of money. It's made me a lot of money. It has stopped me from getting into a lot of premature trades. Thank goodness. <laughs> you get what I mean? It stopped me from getting into a lot of premature trades. Thank goodness. Um, so yes. Um, yeah. And then how do you get into this trade? So the answer is very simple. Like I said to you guys, I would ideally be waiting for a bounce off of here and a break of this counter trend line. Now, because this is a daily time frame, maybe you might not be able to get a proper um, entry on a daily time frame. So at this point, I will usually start. This is when I will start scaling down to the four hour time frame. And as you can see, we when we pinch back into here. And once we started to drop, because this is a daily time frame on a four hour, I would have seen a close outside of this. A four hour candle would have closed for other four hour candles to form. And I'd have jumped in on a four hour candle close. And then my stop losses would have come here. And then obviously would have my first level target would have been here, as I always tell you guys simple as abc so i'll just explain to you guys uh, once again not favorite retracement so my short positions would have been here uh stop losses here first level take profit would have been somewhere all the world way up here so now you guys are probably saying to yourself but that's like this is not if this is not the best risk to reward like how am i going to be taking this kind of trade and expect to be profitable and blah 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 remember what i said to you guys the idea of the first time you jump into a trade like this is not for you to go out there and catch a lot of pips the idea is for you to get a taste of the market okay jump into the market take something so at the first retreat at the first level target here if you had four lots open i would advise you to close two if you have four lots open maybe you can close you can you can close um maybe 10 percent, 20 percent. usually some people close 50 percent of that position i like to take out 50 percent of my position at the at, at this level about here you can take out 10 percent, 20 percent. so for example now if you have four lots open about here once the market because whether you like it or not this green place from here to here is still profit the idea is from this your whole analysis you still walked away with something right from this whole analysis you still walked away with something and once you take out maybe 10 20 30 40 50 percent of your account here or your profit here you can then move your stop losses what to break even making this trade absolutely risk-free you can then hold on to this trade and then look left and now start to look say okay where could we potentially see a full-time reversal okay maybe down here this obviously now increases your risk to reward and makes it a lot more significant. Are you guys getting where I'm coming from? So the idea is not, oh, the first level target is not the end or be all. It's not like, okay, that's all I'm going to make. No, the essence of the first level target is for you to be like, okay, I was able to bag something. Okay, I was able to what bag something. Let me just draw this one more time. Okay, I was able to what bag something. And this is one of the psychologies of trading that most, most traders don't understand when you get in there you want to try as much as possible to take what you can take so this would be your first level target like 0.79 like is this guy serious yes i'm very serious you know most people are you know jumping in for the big guns they want to make it rich they want to make rich they want to, they want to become rich now they want to make it big now they want to make all the big bucks now no it's a systematic way to go out around things so this would be how I would look at my first trade uh, on this. And this is exactly how I'm going to be looking at my second trade. Um, not really second trade, but how I'm going to hold on to um, the next trade. So I'm just going to leave this here. Okay. So this is still here. So I move stop losses. So you can see how um, I'm able to catch all these pips all the way from here to here. Um, so if I really calculate this trade from here all the way down here, you'll be looking at, let's see, you'll be looking at a 3.3 to 1, which is not bad. Judging from the fact that this is just one trade, there's still going to be another opportunity as well, which I'm obviously going to be showing you guys shortly. Shortly. Actually, I feel like this market actually dumped even further. So if I just put this here like so okay so ladies and gentlemen the idea here is for us to understand that um our first trade uh usually comes on the second retracement we need to allow the first one form give us a guideline and then we have the second one form it's so easy straightforward all you need is like a 
I want you to look at it this way. It's like, okay, we come down here, so just look left. All the ones that acted out resistance on the left will usually hook. It's like, a, take this as the up, like this is the, this is upstairs, right? Uh -huh. And then we climb downstairs. So this, what was stopping us from going upstairs before will stop us, will, get, will, will, will prevent us from going upstairs again on our way back down. So it's just like stairs, right? So that's exactly how I want you guys to look at this. So simple and so straightforward. So the next place I'll, I'll potentially be looking at, I'll now be looking left. So for some potential areas, but um, really and truly, I will actually just allow it flow. Um, and as you can see, the market just dumps all the way to the upside. So you definitely make a lot of profit, profit especially when there's space. I like space, okay? You know, and then you now start to see potential retracement about here, okay? Um, so at this point, I'm just like, okay, first one has happened, second one has happened. This is most likely the third one that's going to be happening. But for here, I will need you to shine your eyes. So I can see something like this on the left hand side. Um, so I will then be looking for potential selling opportunities about here. Now, what do we do? We'll look out for a potential ca candle count. We'll be looking out for a potential candle count for it to form somewhere around here. Um, so we've obviously pulled back into here and oh shit, my phone. Sorry guys, my phone was buzzing. Sorry guys. And then usually the third retracement, so this is already looking like a, a potential third retracement. So usually the third retracement uh, might not necessarily be as big as the first and the second one, might just be a bit smaller depending on the market pressure, okay? And yeah, let's see how this unfolds. And as you can see, the third one just absolutely starts to cook and I can guarantee you this one just bleeds all the way to the downside over here just literally just bleeds all the way to the downside so at this point so if i look left now you're probably looking where overall target um, looking for potential overall targets um so for this first trade remember i told you um my targets were also here as well so what i'll have in this situation i'll have t1 t2 just because of how, what's happening on the left and then potentially t3 now t3 for me is not necessarily a target right i'll be trailing my stops from this first trade once i take out maybe 20 percent of my trade 10 percent 50 percent depending on, on on how you like your risk management to be um i mean it's not that deep if you get what i mean so i'll just take out the percentage of it move stop losses to break even and allow the market absolutely coast um once we get to t2 i might take out maybe another 10 percent, 20 percent, depending on how i feel and then when i'm jumping into this next trade right listen guys i jump into this trade and my stop loss is here this stop loss is also now I, I then activate what they call a trailing stop for this one right so that the, my stop load let me explain to you what trailing stops are if my stops were back here at entry right um when i activate the trailing stop the market i just Okay, hold on. Let me explain. I think I'm explaining too, too many things at the same time. Delete this. Delete this. And we'll keep this. So, let's take it one by one. How would I handle the first trade and how would I handle the second trade? Okay? So, the first trade is very simple and straightforward. We jumped in here on the pullback because the barbed wire, I call it a barbed wire, he held. This guy was trying to go up. He held. Bam. And then we dropped, right? Enter this trade. First level target is here. I take out 20, 10, 20% 20 of my position. When I do that, I move stop losses that were here to break even. Uh, let's actually bring in some diagrams to help. Okay. Like so. First level target was here. The risk to reward wasn't perfect, right? But I took out 10% of my trade. So if I had four lots open, I closed 0.4. Once I've done that, I've held something. No matter how little, I've made profit. I've been profitable. Then I move stop losses to break even, right? Now, the next level target for this will be down here because it's simple. I need to look left. I cannot ignore this guy. What I'm going to do here is I am then going to take out maybe another 30% of my position, right? Um, so once I've done, I've taken out another 30% of my position, I will then, don't forget my stop losses are still past break even all the way here. For this first trade, I will then activate what they call a trailing stop. Now a trailing stop is, 
very simple a trailing stop is simply where you set your stop loss procedure to follow the market maybe a hundred pips away meaning that if this market was trading here or let's say down here my stop losses will automatically adjust to somewhere around here because it's about a hundred pips away from the market what this does for you is you don't need to stress yourself about what the market is doing as the market drops lower your stop losses will be getting closer to the market and then in the event of any sudden reversal obviously the market would then reverse back into your store and don't forget your stop loss does not adjust all the way back up it just keeps coming down and wherever it stops if the market pushes against it it will get you stopped out so for the first trade sweet and nice um the market you take out the percentage here you take out another percentage here you're looking good and then you start trading the stop and then you bag that will now obviously the, the trading stop let's say you took out 20 percent in your first TP, TP took out 20% in your second TP. The remaining 60%, you allow it trail your stops all the way down here. So for any reason, this market starts to pull back and then stop takes your stop out. The remaining 60% of your position, which would be about 3.6 slots, will get closed out, right? I don't know if I'm making any sense. Hopefully I am. Now that's done. That's the first trade. Now the second trade is very simple and straightforward because of the fact that this is on a daily time frame like i keep telling you guys i go on a four hour time frame to execute my trades my time frame execution my my time frame for execution is always four hour because on the four hour i can see these pullbacks a bit more and i can guarantee you that this guy that came out here would have given me enough space for me to draw my candle trend line from here all the way here on daily it doesn't look so great but this is exactly what it would have looked like and i've would had my first trade here and then stop losses come here and then the same cycle repeats itself okay the same cycle for this one repeats itself here my entries would have been somewhere around here first level target here trail stops all the way to the downside okay simple as straightforward now it's something like i always tell people the fourth one always usually tries to form um and as you can see pretty nicely that's why i said the third one always does the trick bam 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 you can't compare this fall off to this fall off okay you can't compare this fall off to this fall off now some people are like ah oh, that's why didn't we get into this trade about here mm. i mean you could you could but i always like to take the first two which is um the 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 this is usually the first one. I like to take the second one for confirmation and the third one always works. I hope this is now starting to make sense. So it's all about break of structure and then pull. So let me break this. In. Let me make this even simpler. We have an uptrend, break of structure and then we come down. Now on the way back down, you want to use the resistance levels from the left side to guide you all the way down and then you want to trade not the first pullback the second and the third very lucrative guys very lucrative you know why that is so lucrative because you have all this space all this space from here i knew i had space all the way to here and once we broke here i knew we had space all the way down here and once we broke here we had space all the way down here if i look left i'm sure the next resistance bar was here so i'm dealing with all this space from this green bar, I knew the next level to worry about was here. It's a lot of pips. And once we broke it, I knew I had nothing to worry about until here. And once we broke it, I knew I had nothing to worry about until here. So it's just how it is. This is how I like to make the trade and make a lot of money. It's, it's so lucrative. Um, and I see no reason why people shouldn't be doing it. Now, there's another thing I want to warn you guys about. But before I get into that, first retracement is usually sweet. Second one is sweet. Uh, sorry, first one is to teach you how it's going to most likely play out second one we jump on it third one might not give you the best um might not give you enough time to jump on it you know why because the selling pressure is usually a lot so you really want to be careful watching for hour and don't be afraid to pull the trigger on the third one um provided everything is looking all nice and sweet now obviously we come all the way and we try to consolidate for what it might look like have looked like the fourth one but i can guarantee you this is not the fourth one the fourth one is usually going to be bigger and the fourth one is where the reversal usually always ha freaking happens. So you might be thinking, ah, this is looking like, and this is where I want to warn you guys, ah, this is looking like a nice one. I'm about to say this about falling knife. Maybe because the first one happened, you were like, hmm, second one happened. I'm scared though. Third one, like, ah, I missed it. I'll get onto the fourth one. You now get onto the fourth one, and then it triggers you. As you can see, you're like, yes, we're going to come down uh, nicely. And then what usually tends to happen is the fourth one is where the 
the nastiest reversal literally takes place. You know how I know? Because I was act actually and absolutely in this fourth trade. So I could tell you for free <laughs> what to do and what not to do. So ladies and gentlemen, let's quickly recap. As you can see, we need a break of structure, double top, start coming down, allow the first retracement form, um, look to trade the second one and look to trade the third one. This example is not exactly the clearest one. I'm not even going to lie. Um, it took me a bit of, um, I had to bring out my laser trader glasses for me to identify the pullbacks um and obviously the the high points on the left side but hey it is what it is usually the second one always gives you the 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 gives you the best trade it's easier for you to read and interpret the third one is usually always in a hurry so by the time you jump on the second one and this is why this is what they call trading psychology um trading psychology is very important because when you see a setup especially in this one like this when you jump into the into the trade and you're able to lock in some profit that gives you a certain level of peace of mind that's why i'm taking time out to also explain risk management in this situation as well this also gives you a certain peace of mind because now you know that regardless of whatever happens i've made money and i've moved my stop losses to break even so nothing can happen i've banked money and my exposure has been moved to break even the only thing that's going to happen is maybe my my floating my disappear it happens but i know i've locked in one secondly i know i can't lose money that would also now make you more relaxed and you can now really pay attention to the third pullback okay very important now before i go guys um i was looking at giving you guys another example maybe i'll give you i think i i just jumped on another gbp jpy trade uh recently with the falling knife strategy that was absolutely fun mm, should i use that the trade is actually still ongoing so i don't think it's a perfect example okay jbp jpy i'll save it for the forex mastery students once again ladies and gentlemen if you're not a forex mastery student i suggest you join the program why because i have put 13 years worth of experience into that course um, and when I say 13 years worth of experience into a course, the reason why you need to take what I'm saying seriously is because, guys, I mean, take a look at this. This is, you, 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 can't, you can't get this anywhere else. It's either you're learning basic stuff that doesn't work or you're learning things that just doesn't make any sense, that is overly complicated. I am bringing basic to reality what they taught us in baby pips, how does it actually work in real life? So if you haven't grabbed the Forex Mastery program, click the link in the description right there. Do yourself a favor and absolutely transform your trading. You will not regret it. I will be citing a lot more examples. As a matter of fact, on Forex Mastery program, apart from the top-down analysis, I will be citing more and more examples as the market unfolds. And as you can see, the fourth one absolutely just, you know, just goes crazy. And then we just start to pretty much shoot all the way to the upside. But guys, I also want you guys to notice something as this market starts to go all the way to the upside. Notice something. Notice something, okay? Notice. Notice. Notice something. Can you see how even as we now had a trend reversal here back to the upside, this green bars that we used as our reference points, right, are now holding like stairs guys get, get get the gist get the gist you can see this this because we're not heading to the upside the support will now also support this guy if we're coming down the resistance that resisted the left side will also resist the right side if we're going up what supported the left side will also support the right side you guys can see and that's pretty much the market just pretty much rallied all the way to the upside you can see a pullback what supported on the left side will also support on the right side. What resisted on the left side will also resist on the right side. I think that summarizes everything I've been trying to teach since the beginning of this. I, I tried because I was cracking my brain like how the how best do I explain this to you guys? It's a bit technical. Technical is a bit advanced. But all you need to do is just look for ch change in trend as it's going in the opposite direction. What supported? Look now. Like I'm not crazy. This guy was a support. Come, we push pin into here. If I draw my Fibonacci from swing high to swing low, this guy's a 50 fib here, 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 50 fib pull, pull. So, the same thing that you used to catch this move down to the downside, if you, you apply the same strategy here, you'd have made a lot of money. You'd have jumped on this trade, jumped on this trade, and, or maybe you didn't jump on this one, but you'd have jumped on this. Is but the second one, this is the third one, and this fourth one seemed to have worked, but don't trade the fourth one. Sometimes it works. 
Sometimes it doesn't work. For me, I don't like to trade the fourth one. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking around till the very end of this. Once again, some people will call it basic baby pip stuff. Uh, well, it is what it is. I never saw anybody use baby pips information this effectively. I know exactly how to go about it and actually showed me how to use it in real life. So I think you guys should be grateful for me. If you found this video helpful, drop me a comment down below. If you'd like to see more videos of this, like this, let me know. And I'll catch you guys on my other screen. Take, easy, take it easy, guys, and let's go. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with me till the very end of this lengthy video. The most important thing is I know you learned something new. I know you did. So if you did, smash the subscribe button. And if you already haven't gotten it, grab the Forex Mastery program in the description down below. Click the link, it's just 99 bucks. Improve your trading even further. What are you waiting for? I'll see you guys on the other side of profitability with your green Lamborghini. Take it easy and peace out.